Hello, Ottawans and Ottawans from around the globe. Today's video is on humankind combat, one of the most important concepts in the game. Specifically, it's on combat strength and advanced tips and tricks you need to know to take your game to the next level. Before we begin, I just want to mention that this is a re-upload of a previous video on my channel that was experiencing some technical difficulties. It's also pretty important to note that on my channel, I have a ton more videos all about combat on line of sight, on forced surrender and war support, on sieging, and more. If you like the content you see here, feel free to give it a like or a subscription. I'm still a channel under 100 subs, so everything helps. Thanks so much, and enjoy. Now, let's head on over and talk about battles. Well, there's three reasons you could be losing battles. Lack of numbers, lack of technology, and lack of strategy. If you're having problems with the first two, check out my channel for other videos on industry and science to get you up to speed. Where I see a lot of people fail, however, is on the strategy. And it's because they might not necessarily understand the fundamental concepts. So let's get you to mastery. We're starting with combat strength. Duh. No, no, I mean seriously, you need to know this like the back of your hand. Let's just talk about what modifies combat strength and what are the implications. Once you really understand those, the strategy will fall into place. And if you still need help, at the end of the video, there's strategies and examples of real life scenarios. There's this wonderful table of combat strength. And if you don't know it, it's not a huge deal, but it's important you've seen it at least once. It basically states that if the difference in combat strength is this much, then the maximum damage you can do is this much, and the minimum amount of damage you can do is this. So let's say our units are even strength. The difference is zero. You can do between 12 and 28 damage. You'll also be taking between 12 and 28 damage. If you're stronger than the other unit by one, you'll do between 15 and 30 damage, but you'll only take between 11 and 25. Now, this is just something to keep in mind, but you can see it really benefits you to manage this properly. So let's go over the things that contribute to combat strength. The first is combat modifiers. These are situational things that'll modify your combat strength. Crossing a river gives you minus three combat strength. Crossing a river basically means if you have to go in and then out of a river to attack somebody, you're gonna take this huge penalty. And the second combat modifier is the high ground. Oh my days, the memes. It's over, Anakin. I have the high ground. Oh my days. Ha ha ha. I think the reason high ground memes are just so prevalent is because it's actually so impactful. It gives you plus four just from being on a higher ground. The next is fortification. And fortification offers you plus six combat strength. So if you're going to be attacking a city, you better bring overwhelming strength or siege units to take out those walls. It's much easier to find a way into the city and then attack them. It's probably the way to go. Rear attacks. So we got the enemies surrounded. You got them on one side, you got them on the other. You get a rear attack bonus. Plus four from a rear attack. This is super helpful and you can easily get units to flank around. Seven out of 10 attacks are from the rear. Okay, well that still leaves a 30% chance that I'll attack you from the front. Uh, yeah, but it'll be easier to stop. I can always block the blow or I can counter it. But... The next is wounded. If your unit's under 66% health, they'll take a minus one from being damaged. If they're under 33% health, they're considered seriously wounded and take a minus two. Stupid bastard, you've got no arms left. Yes, I have. Look, just a flesh wound. A classic. The next is friendly units. You actually get a plus one combat strength each unit you're adjacent. This unit here has one next to it, so it gets plus one. The game actually rewards you for clustering up your boys like little grapes. The next is tree cover, and it only applies to defense. This comes back to that classic meme where if the jungle starts speaking Vietnamese, or the snow starts speaking Finnish, you're in trouble. This is only applicable on defense, but it gives you a plus four combat strength bonus. No line of sight. Well, we got a whole section on this, so we'll come back to it, but you actually get a minus four strength from this. What? The midpoint of the video already? I bet you're expecting an ad for a VPN you'll never use, or headphones that claim to drown out the noise of your significant other complaining you're playing too many strategy games. 
but it isn't. I'm coming at you with a once in a lifetime offer. For every like this video gets, we're going to generate one Welsh coin. That Welsh coin will be directly deposited into our GoFundMe to have Sean Bean do the voiceover for all the narration in this game. Yes, that's right, all of the voice lines you know and love and can't get out of your head. The same exact ones, but this time done by Sean Bean. Seriously, you're gonna have to like this video because if we don't get enough, we're gonna have to go with Gilbert Godfrey and no one wants that. Anyway, back to the video. The next section is unit traits. Now I could do a whole video on this because each specialized unit might have a specialized trait. But essentially, this is a trait assigned to a unit. We'll touch on just a few here. The first is anti-cavalry. This is your spearman or pikeman versus horses or cavalry. You basically get a plus eight when attacking, which is huge. Vulnerable in close combat. Melee unit versus archer. Who's gonna win? Basically, your archer boys suck at melee combat. So if they get attacked, they're toast. Minus eight. The next is one I bet you you have not even thought about or considered but it applies to heavy chariot units. If you did not start adjacent to the enemy unit, you get a bonus from running into them. Hey bud, I'm really sorry. You're watching a Canadian. I had to put a hockey meme in here. Can I get a like from the uh, Canadians watching the video? Thanks, bud. Oh, can you tell I've spent time in Ontario? <laughs> so the next section is just some anomalies and general tips that you should know. These don't really fall under any specific topic, but you really need to know about these. The first is busting the fog of war. Basically, if you give a quick hover of the mouse in the fog of war where you kind of want it to walk, and an enemy unit's there, it'll actually prompt you with the battle. This isn't really a game changer, and I'm not even sure if it's a bug or not. But realistically, it could help you out, so I threw it in here. Have you ever tried to be the attacker, but then all of a sudden, the enemy gets to attack first, and you're like... What the hell is this? Why does the other guy have the first hit? I just attacked him. Well, this is because the AI decided a second before you were going to attack them, they were going to attack you. What yeah. kind of bullshit is this? You people must be out your damn mind. Honestly, I could give you my opinion on this, but we're not here for that. We're here for tips and tricks. And the next tip and trick is grouping your armies up to save money. I guess they're sharing rations or toilet paper or something. For example, I have all these units separated, and it's costing me 595 gold out of my 790 per turn. But hey, I'm going to group them up, and you can see that my army upkeep per turn has gone down to 450. So it's key to understand, what techs allow me to make bigger groups of units so that I can group them up together? And I've put them all right here on the screen for you. The next is destroying districts. Like I've talked about time and again, you might get into a war and not finish them off. So how do you cripple them for the rest of the game? And modern problems require modern solutions. The trick is to basically take out district, destroy their revenue of industry and food and science. That'll slow them down and allow you to get the upper hand later in the game. Kaboom. Thanks so much for watching. I just want to give a quick shout out to these channels that inspired some of the content you saw here today. It's also pretty important to note that on my channel, I have a ton more videos all about combat on line of sight, on forced surrender and war support, on sieging, and more. If you like the content you saw here today, feel free to give it a like and a subscription. It helps me out a ton as I'm a super small channel. And if you leave a comment, I'll personally reply to each and every one. Oh, and I almost forgot. I've handpicked the videos on screen right now as ones I'm sure you're going to love. So if you have a couple extra minutes, why not take a look? Enjoy!